A staple of Nickelodeon in the late 90s leading into the start of the new millennium was a show about two brother beavers who happened to be angry. Sometimes. Most times. Okay, the show's title checks out. Norbert and Daggett. The two title beavers of the show were set against the world living on their own in the middle of a forest which, for some reason, is the epicenter of so many weird things that now these two brothers' hijinks and shenanigans take them on some ridiculous adventures. Aside from the vibey theme song, the show focused on the surrealism of the everyday zany lives of these two bachelor beavers, showcasing the weird wilderness of the outskirts of a fictional town set in Oregon. And as fun as the show was, however, the production side of things may take much less of an exciting turn, especially for how the show would end, or at least try to end. Don't hurt yourself, just get on with it. So the three beaver brothers, Norbert, Daggett, and Albert are- Albert? Who are you talking about? The third beaver? There is no third beaver. Sure there is, look at- Oh, no, you're right, there's only two. See, I told you. So then who's Albert? Oh, I'm glad you asked because that's today's sponsor. Traditional banks are just tiring now. Hidden fees for every little thing, long wait times for customer service, the list goes on. That's where the Albert debit card comes in. It is completely different from any bank account that you've ever used. One, it's free to sign up for, and two, it's easy to use. You get five to 20% back on purchases from places like Starbucks, Walmart, McDonald's, and more. Albert also won't charge you any maintenance fees or hold you under the weight of maintaining a minimum balance. The best and coolest feature though is the genius features. Stressing over finances is something that so many of us can relate to. Luckily, Albert has a team of financial experts called geniuses. They will examine your personal situations, help devise a plan, and are always available for you if you have any questions. The list of great things Albert does goes on and on. So click the link in the description box to download the Albert app today. On top of all of this, right now for a limited time when you open up an account and connect a qualifying direct deposit, you'll just get $150. Supporting Albert helps support the channel. They've been supporting for a long time now. I appreciate them. Thanks so much to Albert for sponsoring today's video. Our work here is done! In 1997, the world was introduced to two angry little beavers. Norbert, the smarter and seemingly more educated, slightly older brother by a few minutes, and Daggett, the more energy-filled, not as smart brother. Their relationship has always boiled down to being messy. Sure, they still love each other at the end of the day, but oh boy, do they really get on each other's nerves at almost every instance possible. From Norbert belittling Daggett and tricking him into so many schemes for his own selfish benefit to Daggett, well, being Daggett, they were no stranger to dealing with a handful of issues every episode, whether between each other or the inhabitants of the woodlands. But also, the Angry Beavers was no stranger to dealing with network issues, specifically with the way in which the show ended. But it was evident looking back that there were clear signs of heads butting against one another between the creators of the show and Nickelodeon. Going back to season two's episode, Alley Oops, where it faced some interesting pushback in censorship. In that episode, centering around Daggett having a magical bowling ball, Norbert at one point would say to Daggett, shut up. Smosh would be so proud. Shut but that's not what happened when the show would make it to air. In fact, it originally premiered with a censor beep covering up the words. You think up. A bit odd for a kid's cartoon to do. Rather than them making the creators take a cue from Rocco's Modern Life with the infamous Heck sensor, Heck, then it's supposed to be <laughs> sensors. I'll never get tired of using that clip. They instead just actually censored, in what to most people seems less quote unquote offensive, the words shut up. Later on, they would go as far as to just redub the line to shush up. Shush up, stupid. Officially removing the censor bleep. While this is weird in general, it didn't come from a preset list of things you can or cannot say, but rather from the at-the-time president of Nickelodeon, Herb Scannell, as he didn't want this taught to kids watching, having a very particular way in which he saw the world working. His philosophy being that if the show didn't say shut up, then kids wouldn't say shut up, as if we weren't learning and hearing worse from others at school. But it is odd that there's other instances of the show saying shut up before this moment, like here in season one. Please shut up and also having a problem with telling someone to shut up, but then still keeping in the line stupid, inferring that the person who they're telling to shut up is stupid is completely okay. On top of this, the rules that were in place on the cartoons were mostly found in the way characters would be allowed or not allowed to be dressed and represented on screen. A lot of feedback given from the network would usually boil down to the creators and writers sarcastically poking fun in ways that would fly under the radar and be more of inside jokes. When notes would 
come back saying make sure this is kid friendly, they made sure to overdo that note given. In fact, turning that exact note into the episode The Legend of Kid Friendly, an episode where the beavers have to face off against Kid Friendly, a cowboy-themed robot. Anytime weapons of any sort were used in the show, the notes given to them would be to make them larger and more colorful, where then they would make sure that they were drastically doing just that. Now, this experience, and what we will further get into while seen by some as not-so-great experiences working on the show, the creator of the show, Mitch Schauer, recounts his time working with Nickelodeon mostly positive. Even if there were times of contention, like in the episode Go Beavers, where a group of people are seemingly crushed by a car and met with no pushback from the network, but in that same episode where a blimp would be set to crash into a group of people and doing pretty much the same thing, even though moments later the same blimp crushes the football team, was met with pushback and ultimately rejected. It's a weird mix of give and take and for the most part, certain things met with pushback could make sense, but others like this last example with the same effect being the result of something running into a group of people and taking them out, there really isn't a good reason as to why one over the other being okay. You'd think the way in which these people are crashed into wouldn't be the problem, but the fact that they are crashed into to begin with would be. But hey, networks are weird. Now, for how the series was planning to end, however, with its final episode, gets into a whole different category of issues between Nickelodeon and the show. <laughs> Time for a short, angry break. The beavers are back. <laughs> to bite more boards. After a four-season run on Nickelodeon, the show was now facing cancellation. And less of a friendly goodbye, the people behind the show were struggling with network conditions, citing being over budget, behind schedule, and an overall feeling of being worn out. This coming directly from the co-developer of the series, Keith Kaxork. To further voice these grievances, a plan for the final episode of the show was devised that would directly, with no holds barred, lay on the line the issues with the network. Bye Bye Beavers was set to be the final segment of The Angry Beavers, where the episode finds our main characters receiving notice in the mail that their show is being cancelled. There was no sugarcoating it. This was going to be an open criticism right to the face of the company. The criticism, however, would go further than just sticking up for their own show, but for the network's treatment of all shows in general, specifically with how they would treat cancelling and syndicating them. In Angry Beavers fashion, the beavers themselves in the episode now struggle with the realization of them being cartoon characters and their life not being, well, real. Starting to get the picture? No. We're pictures! <laughs> We're not even three-dimensional! Wowzers! This whole would-be episode just focuses on the back-and-forth conversation between Norbert and Daggett. I say would-be as the final episode doesn't exist. Well, not in full animation form at least. The whole episode, however, has the complete voice acting audio done, and one fateful day in 2006, it was unveiled to the world to see just how dark and funny this episode was planned to be. Along with some leaked storyboards to emphasize the legitness of this being real. Specifically, the dialogue that we hear clues us into the annoyance of rather than Nickelodeon paying for new episodes of shows to be made, they instead would constantly just play reruns after reruns. A network issue we we still see happening today on almost every network. What happens when you're over? Oh, it's not so bad. No? If cartoon's good, even if it isn't. It's rerun <laughs> incarnated. Ooh, does that hurt? No. Oh. Only when you get the later checks. The cartoon <laughs> being over guys rerun it over and over, and they make lots of well-deserved money. Which they share with the people who made the cartoon, right? Woo! <laughs> 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 Right. As the audio would continue, it becomes more clear behind the usual wackiness in their voices that it is also extremely existential, a look into metaphorically and realistically reaching the end of life, meeting your maker, ceasing to exist, the end of the road. As in done, through, finished, ended, terminate yet, defunct, extinct, extinguished, down for the count, out of badness, signing off, saying sayonara, finito, completo, adios, sending this dog to Montana, going bye-bye. The voice actors themselves would go further into the madness, breaking the fourth wall and mentioning each other by their actual names or other characters they have voiced from different TV shows. Just in general, bouncing off the wall with dialogue as zany as the show was. Hold on, 
Richard. Okay, Nick. Now I mean literally. <laughs> oh, Nick, uh, Norman, uh, Salem. It also goes into how even when the awful, torturous things would happen to them could result in actual death, that it doesn't kill them. As we hear and also see, thanks to the storyboards, the example of them electrocuting themselves with no fatal results. Remember all those times massive amounts of electricity have coursed through our bodies? Uh, yes, Large objects that. have fallen on our heads and huge explosions have blown us to bits? Well, here we go again. That was nuts! Nuts? Yeah. This is what really happens when that stuff happens to real people. Turn it off, Norby! For the love of Todd, turn it off! Ultimately ending the episode with two beavers facing the end together, with Daggett saying, Shut up! A callback to the original censorship issue that there were some clear gripes never patched up about. But right before the end, the two beavers say, April Fool! <laughs> <laughs> leaving this whole mystery a little bit ambiguous. Is that for the sake of the network for doing reruns of this episode if it were to come to fruition? Or was this just a way for them to kind of relieve a bunch of stress and play it off as a big joke? This audio, like I mentioned, was released in 2006 thanks to Richard Horvitz, the voice of Daggett, during a guest spot on Avi Melman's voiceover podcast. One of the show's writers, Micah Wright, takes credit for giving this recorded audio to Horvitz some time back and would further elaborate on how close this episode came to actually being on the air. Which, hearing that, and based on what we have just seen and heard, is pretty wild to think it was close to air at all. There would be no way the network would ever let this episode pass for air on TV, right? I gotta take a look at that. They're angry. They're beavers. They'll be back soon. They're back, and they're still angry. We got approval to do this episode, and every step of the way, Nickelodeon approved moving to the next stage. Wright detailed that this episode that heavily went after the practices of Nickelodeon was simultaneously being given the green light to continue on step by step. But someone, it seems, finally started to fully get the picture. Wright goes on to say, Then they saw it, all put together and said, Wait, this makes us look bad. So they killed it. Yeah, it makes sense from the perspective of a network to do something like that. It's more shocking that they let so much of this happen before they realized that they were the butt of the joke. So the green light they were on for this episode came to a screeching halt at a red. It can go deeper for Nickelodeon than just this though. It's not only that the episode would at the network's expense be a bad look for them, it can also ruin a whole different factor of the same thing Bye Bye Beavers was criticizing reruns. Having a firm ending to something puts out an illusion of the show no longer being there. A mind space viewers could have that Nickelodeon would be worried about. Not just for this show specifically, but for all of their shows. It would make more sense to just continue on with a regular episode that would serve as a technical last new episode of the show, but one that wouldn't slap that label on it so that reruns could constantly air and it would seem business as usual. Being more ambiguous with the show became the practice rather than and finality. When it comes to reruns and how they operate, to have an episode made that definitely marks it as the end means that the network probably can't use it for reruns. It wouldn't make sense to have random episodes playing and then smack dab in the middle is this final episode that declares the show isn't coming back. And then the next episode is just them back and doing something else. The network wouldn't be interested in only getting one use out of an episode that they were paying for. So that is why Nickelodeon specifically at the time had the golden rule in place that doesn't allow for any show's final episode to acknowledge or elude that fact in any way. On top of all of that, adding on the shortcomings of the network, painting them in a bad light, may also not be the best thing for them to broadcast, even in a tongue-in-cheek manner, which this final episode of The Angry Beavers clearly was not as subtle. Today, it's almost commonplace for more meta jokes, references, and fourth wall breaks to be seen and understood by the audience, even ones that come at the expense of the network they're on, or the creators behind them. The only difference being that everyone feels like they are in on the jokes and hopefully all in better working conditions. The actual final episode of the show being episode 62's two segments, Dagski and Norb, and Shell or High Water, which are, in terms of the series as a whole, your average run-of-the-mill silly episodes of The Angry Beavers. It aired on May 26th, 2001. Bye Bye Beavers, along with its counterpart segment, A Tale of Two Rangers, never made it to air, leaving it as an official lost episode of the show. 
and while we are lucky enough to have this audio and some storyboards confirming its existence, it still lingers in my head of what this episode fully put together could have been. Is it likely we'd ever see that happen one day? Probably not, but with how nostalgia driven and meta joke driven things are nowadays, can you really say never? Would you like to see Bye Bye Beavers become a fully realized episode at some point? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.